Okie dokie. Well, <laughs> here's uh, Jack Nicholson holding up a kind of an important key. And uh, I don't know what year this was taken, but it's. I just wanted to show you this shot. And our uh, cute little ducks. Uh, we'll call it the, the Shining Ducks uh, <laughs> for for uh, reference to that you can go look up my lecture number six of the shining uh, Stanley Kubrick uh, movie lecture anyways I was hoping I'm hoping to get this as the uh, screenshot for the video and hopefully it'll attract some people there but we'll get we'll get started with uh, the lecture today <laughs> which uh, uh, I don't think I'm going to be talking very much about the movie The Shining. Uh, what we're going to be talking about is the um, top logical reasons that uh, people believe the moon landings are fake. Um, so uh, let's get started. we got a lot to go over here. So we'll try to go through as fast as possible. Um, the first main reason is uh, what's called the Van Allen belt. I know you hear this a lot, but uh, go out there and, it, it, uh, by the way, the best of these moon landing things uh, will, will show you what NASA has given, you know, and they'll make excuses and whatever, but don't go to some, you know, go to, go to the wacko sites like mine and whatever to get what you should go look exploring NASA, you know, and then go to NASA. We're, you know, the best of these sites that talk about the fake moon landings tell you to go to NASA, to, to, to go to go to the source. We're, we're not telling you to believe us. Uh, you know, the reason there's so many people that believe this is they go to NASA and see what NASA says about these wackos. And anyway, so in Google, type in, uh, you know, about the Van Allen belts and type in NASA and you'll get NASA individuals telling you right now that uh, we still cannot go through the Van Allen belts. And so it's like, what do you mean you can't go? You, you're still trying to fix the problem of going through the Van Allen. You went through the Van Allen belts to get to the moon. How can you still be having a problem? Well, we did it 50 years ago, you know? So go to, type in NASA and Van Allen belts. And NASA will tell you that we still don't have the technology to go through the, the Van Allen belts. So that's actually the one of the number one uh, problems uh, with uh, going to the moon. The second one is uh, the solar radiation on the moon. These these guys were fully lit by the sun, uh, presumably not not studio lights, you know. So if they were standing in those suits um, <laughs> under the sun on the moon that has that has that has no uh, no uh, atmospheric uh, no atmospheric uh, protection whatsoever, the moon, of course, NASA will die. I'm not telling you it has no atmosphere. NASA will tell you it has no atmosphere. And, and the problem with that, of course, is that, you know, pregnant women cannot even fly on, on airplanes, you know, that, 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 that only fly 30, whatever, 30,000 uh, feet up in the thing. And there's, there's plenty of atmosphere after that because of the radiation that goes through a, 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 an actual airline. You know what I mean? And those... I think I assume the airline probably was had more more uh, shielding for radiation than the, than the the suits that these guys were wearing. One of the things that that, that you can watch is uh, when when the Apollo Eleven or any of the astronauts come walking out, and they, they always have the thing where they're walking out and going to the van, and the van's going to take them. Uh, that's on Earth, and they don't look like they're moving around really sluggishly. It looks like those. Those those suits weigh almost nothing. They're walking perfectly fine. If if I was wearing something that had a lot of lead in it, you know, hell, if I was wearing a, you know, like a, a even people you can see cops who wear uh, a, a bulletproof vests, they even kind of are, are a little bit sluggish. Those things are heavy. They're soldiers, you know. Let alone the the amount of lead that you'd have to be wearing to protect yourself on the moon with no atmosphere and getting full blast of solar radiation you know, would be so much, those guys should be crawling on the, they should be wheeling them, uh, on, on wheelchairs to the, to the, to the, to the rocket to, to shoot them off at. So anyways, uh, that's impossible that, uh, that, that, that thin of material could, uh, could, uh, protect you from solar radiation on the moon. Um, 
anyways, uh, the third one is uh, I have a lecture that that uh, ukulele and Neil Armstrong that I I got from a Hawaiian book about Hawaii. It wasn't even about the moonshot, and they were proud that the, the that the, they, they they had one page on the the the, the astronauts were there. Of course, the astronauts, the Apollo Eleven landed near Hawaii miraculously, uh, you know, uh, somehow with no kind of jet engines on the return entry. They landed perfectly on uh perfectly on the near uh the hawaiian islands um where president nixon was already there waiting for them on the uss hornet so that means that they knew that they were going to land in hawaii uh which with all the friction and you know again this was not the space shuttle where you can control it you know it's flight thing it was just a rock falling out of the sky you being able to predict within hundreds of miles where uh that thing's going to fall is almost impossible. Uh, we'll get into that a little bit later. Anyways, uh, in that book, um, if you want to go go look at my lecture, it's, it's called like Ukulele and Neil Armstrong. Um, in that book, uh, they said that uh, uh, oh, uh, they took you know Neil Armstrong took a ukulele from Hawaii up to um, up to the moon, but they didn't take any telescopic lens to take shots of stars. And uh, a lot of people say, oh, you can't take uh, pictures of stars, you know, on the moon. Uh, the, the, the moon's too bright. Well, well, don't any, I mean, I know nothing about photography, but one thing I know about photography is um, without an atmosphere, if you point uh, uh, any, any camera up, uh, you know, away from the, uh, uh, away from the, the, the moon, you know, vertically upwards, um, you will get zero uh, light pollution uh, from because uh, there's no atmosphere. Light pollution occurs, occurs because of an atmosphere. Um, here in uh, in Phoenix, uh, we have to have yellow bulbs because the the light pollution from Phoenix actually affects the, the the telescopes in Tucson. So Tucson asked us to get yellow bulbs so that our white light didn't um, didn't hit off the our atmosphere. Where yes, if, if white light hits off an atmosphere, it'll bounce right back into the, the tubes of a telescope. But when you have no atmosphere on the moon, you can point a, a camera straight up and you should be able to see, um, uh, uh stars, uh, you know, of course, infinite amount of stars and bright enough. And just if they, you know, uh, they were talking about F stops, uh, the Apollo 8 said, uh, one of the astronauts said, Oh, I didn't know what F stop to get the Earth rising, the most famous, uh, shot uh, ever. Uh, Earth rising goes. I didn't know what f stop to use, so obviously they had manners to adjust the um, the amount of time for the uh, uh, the exposure. And so you know, it's just silly that then. And apparently, I think they did finally bring a telescope on the like the, the fourth mission. I don't know Apollo fifteen or sixteen. I think I I don't know what happened to the shots from that. But anyways, my point is, you take a ukulele, but you don't take a. Well, first of all, you taking a ukulele is insane. Uh, to the to the moon. All right. Uh, number four. Uh, no, the, you know they they, they have Cron Cronkite saying, "Oh, Apollo Eleven is coming in like a uh, like a comet." You know, they, they, uh, when Apollo Eleven was uh, re-entering the Earth's atmosphere, and they he says uh, that 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 they say that he, it's coming in like a comet. Well, if they knew it was going to perfectly land in Hawaii, you know, the president's waiting on the USS Hornet in Hawaii. They knew that it's there. You should be able to see. I mean, that that Apollo Eleven has got a it's got a streak across the sky quite a bit, you know. And 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 Cronkite even says that they see. You know, they see, uh, they see it. It looks like a comet in the atmosphere that it's burning, like, you know, just like a meteorite, you know? Um, anyways, they didn't prepare, you know, get a, get a few guys, like two or three guys with cameras, you know, and shoot it up at the sky and, 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 and try to capture the Apollo 11 re entering there. Uh, no. So a little bit strange, you know, that they knew perfectly where it was going to land. Nixon was sitting there, not in a Australia, not in here. Uh, there, he he was sitting there. Anyways, alrighty. Um, I like the NASA talks to Collins when um when uh, Neil Armstrong and Aldrin are are walking on the moon. And uh, and Collins says some it's kind of something kind of really interesting. That I, I never thought of. At first, I was like, you know, when you first hear it, it's like, okay, I guess he would ask that. But he he says, oh, how does how does the picture look? And the NASA, because he can't see uh, Neil Armstrong or uh, 
Buzz Aldrin. He doesn't have a uh, uh, the television uh, receptor, I guess, uh, re- reception in the in his. He's 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 orbiting, of course, above the moon, uh, waiting for uh, Neil Armstrong and Collins to. I'm sorry, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin to come back. So he's he's in the orbit uh, about the moon. Uh, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin are walking around on the moon. So NASA is telling them, oh, it looks great and this and this. And then he says something really strange. He says, how's the lighting? And, and it's just like, it's a, it's, a, it's a strange way for a person who's at the moon to ask that. That's, that's like what a movie person would say is, how's the lighting? I mean, think about it. You're an astronaut. You're on the moon. Shouldn't you say, how's the, how's the moonlight, you know, f- reflecting off their bodies? And it's funny that when he says, how's the lighting, something clicked in my head of how they, um, how they, they did this, uh, with the astronauts. Because, of course, they, re- they rehearsed these, uh, they rehearsed the moon landings with, 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 I mean, they have Apollo, uh, footage, of course, of, of um, them on you know strings that are attached because they wanted to simulate and see how what it would be like to walk on the moon. So the the you know the bungee cords attached to them would give them the one six gravity and they could walk around and and feel what it would be like to walk around on the moon. You know. So what I got a feeling is they I think that they they shot a, a very a very good dress rehearsal. You know what I mean? Where they said. Okay, let's get you in all the suits. Let's do this, and and now let's see what the moon's gonna be like. Let's put you through the things of what the moon, and, and we're gonna even have like the NASA people talking to you, and and this and this, so you don't feel uncomfortable when you get to the moon. You know, we want to make you feel as, and I understand that the training they would have to go through this is um uh, that they would, I would do this with the NASA astronauts too. I would make sure that they were fully trained, so that, because they're gonna be freaking out going on the moon. Uh, make them feel as much as they can to rehearse them very well until it's almost exactly what it's going to be on the moon. So I got a feeling that the way they convinced them to go with the faking is they shot the rehearsal and uh, and that is what we're watching. And then, I mean, if these guys didn't know already, the astronauts, Neil Armstrong, Collins, and this, if they didn't know beforehand, um, then that's when NASA told them, look, you know, uh, you can, you know, you, we, we, we send you to the moon, you're going to die of radiation uh, from the Van Allen belts, let alone die maybe crashing into the moon, trying to land on the moon, let alone die maybe trying to get off the moon. There's so many, so many things that could go wrong, you know, than this. So do you want to die or do you want to uh, shoot? Or the other thing they could have said is, do you want to die like the Apollo 1 uh, astronauts that we killed on purpose because... Gus Grissom was so angry at uh, how the he hung a lemon on the on the the the, the land of the the capsule. Uh, so uh, uh, between that and whatever, you know, they scared him and going, we we could fry you, you know, instead, you know, if you don't if you don't uh, go along with this. Uh, watch the movie, uh, of course, Capricorn One. They kind of explain that they do another thing. It's it's similar, but they they, they do a pretty good job of telling the the astronauts or convincing them. You should do this, or, or we're gonna do that. So I got a feeling it's not like Buzz Aldrin. They 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 fa- they, they they were faking it while you know while we're watching it. They had already the footage a long time ago of all this stuff. You know they had shot the rehearsal, and Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin and, and Collins thought that everything was legit. You know a problem maybe. You know I'm pretty sure, uh, but um, they eventually. Uh, were convinced otherwise by NASA, and um, and that was the uh, result. Alrighty, uh, this is going to be a long lecture here. <laughs> Let's take a look at some of the notes here. Okay, um, watch the this again. Don't don't listen to me. Go and watch the after interview of Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin. We're talking about like, oh, I don't know, it was probably a month, two months after the they came home from the moon, supposedly. Uh, go watch that interview. It's just terrible, you know. I mean, you can tell these people have been through hell. They're not happy to be from the, 
They're not happy to be have gone to the moon, have lived through it. I, I would be dancing a, a fit of joy if I had gone to the moon and survived all the lucky things that they did. Um, so um, we'll go watch the after interview. And uh, millions of people have seen that. And, and just that alone has destroyed their idea of um, that we went to the moon. Um, when the, when the, you know, the, there's, uh, there's the, the, when they take off from the moon, um, you know, you have like, like a 10,000 pound, uh, of force of engine, uh, roaring. And, and even though there's a vacuum on the moon, the vibrations alone of a 10,000, uh, uh, pound, uh, force, uh, engine rattling the inside of the, um, cabin should have made uh, some sort of noise inside uh, the cabin um, so uh, and there is no noise uh, in there um, a lot of people might say well the cabin was depressurized so any noise in the cabin wouldn't have gone through their suits okay that's fine then if that's true that the, 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 the cabin was depressurized and no noise can go through the suit uh, watch they, 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 they have one of the Apollos where they're hammering a I don't know a, a steel bar into the moon and uh, <laughs> And that the, the the way NASA explains the that you can hear the hammer hit the hit the the, the steel bar. NASA says, "Oh well, the vibration through the suit uh, went um, went into the the mouthpiece, the the mic piece in the side of the suit. So that's why you can hear the hammer is because which is idiotic. Ask any sound engineer, and he'll tell you no, that won't happen. But so you're either lying here or you're lying here. If if a hammer can vibrate through a suit and get to the mic of the astronaut, then a ten thousand pound engine vibrating the the seat and the walls of the of the thing vibrating it like crazy should obviously go into the microphone. And there is no sound uh, from that. I have one of that in the Shining lecture where um, uh, the three of them are in the car traveling to the hotel. Jack Nicholson in this, and and uh, there's no sound from the car, even though the car window is open, and those Volkswagen, uh, those Volkswagen, um, old Volkswagens in the in the 80s used to make hellacious noise, you know. So I I don't know if that was a point from Kubrick that something was wrong. I'm sure he he, he watched all the footage from NASA. Uh, anyways, um, I just I just learned, you know, there's all these shows now trying to reprogram. Uh, all the, the the current generation to believe we went to the moon, and one of the things that Cronkite said, which was kind of interesting in one of the programs, is a hundred and sixty feet cubed cabin was in Apollo eleven, and and it, you think about a hundred and sixty feet cubed, uh, well, five cubed is a hundred and twenty five, six cubed I think is like one ninety six, so you're looking at a a, a room. That's literally six feet by, you know, at the most, six feet by six feet by six feet. I, I don't know how three guys can put on a suit. And some of them sometimes are wearing the suit. Sometimes they're not wearing the suit. In that kind of thing, it, I would love to see them putting the suit on and, and off in a 160-foot cubed uh, cabin. Um, go look at the, this is not the logical things. Well, it is logical. Go look at the pictures of the, um <laughs> Go look at the pictures of the lander on the moon. I mean, you have warped panels, panels that don't even let it are bulging and and don't even uh, are not even sealed to the edge of the thing. Uh, basically, this is under just lander and construction. Look at the, the the meaty part of the lander, and you've got panels. Uh, people go over it uh, if you type that up on YouTube. And, and again, use NASA photographs. Don't use wacko people's. Photographs. Go go to NASA and get the photographs yourself. I had one friend that I I showed him that, and he goes, "That that's the fake one, right? That's that's the one the one like in the system." I go, "No, that those are shots that are supposed to have taken place on the moon." And so, and he was uh, he's he, he he's not one hundred percent. Hopefully, this lecture will one hundred percent convince him that uh, <laughs> it's silly that uh, uh, something would be engineered like that or could even survive. Uh, that. Anyways, 
Uh, of course, there's here's a for more picture stuff. Uh, the flag waving. There's a million things about this. There's no burn hole under the lander. You know, the lander when it landed, of course, had to burn. You know, to to land softly. And there's no burn hole under the lander. Uh, when it was burning under the lander, obviously, it would shoot moon dust up. The same moon dust that you see the footprint in. You know, that moon dust is going to pop up, and and the dust is going to fall onto the. Um, Onto the, the, the pads on the landers, you know. If you look at those gold pads, there's no moon dust whatsoever. It's silly. I mean, couldn't they have just, didn't they think this through? Thrown a little bit of moon dust on top of those things? Come on, you know. It's just like, <laughs> they were really dumb. <laughs> I guess they just thought that the American public was dumb. Um, the other thing that I, I, I think I'm the only, per well, I think that some other people have mentioned this. They're running on the moon, falling down, driving the moon buggy like they're on a San Diego, uh, you know, d d dune, dunes in, on the beach. They're, d they're driving the moon buggy like crazy, spinning dust and whatever. I mean, if you fall and rip your suit, and I assume those suits are not, you know, made out of lead again because, when I see the people, the astronauts walk into the van to go to get launched, they're walking like they're wearing a, a Halloween costume. So those are not heavy fiber suits. Um, so I don't see anybody running on the moon and falling on a jagged rock, possibly falling on a jagged rock and doing the stuff that they did. They did that obviously to, to make it more animated so people would be, I, I don't know why they did it. It's so incredibly stupid. Uh, to make people think that somebody could would actually run like that uh, on a moon that has no atmosphere, where one little rip in the in the suit would mean a certain death uh, within a, within a couple of minutes, definitely way before they got back to the <laughs> sealed themselves back up into the uh, uh, the the lander uh, and and de and pressurize the cabin. Yeah, because when you open the door, the cabin's depressurized, so you gotta. I don't know how long it takes you to pressurize a cabin, but you got to run to the lander, climb up the lander, eat all this time suffocating because you got a rip in your pants or whatever. Your doom buggy crashed, uh, but um, uh, or your your face mask, face mask, uh, your helmet cracked, the face uh, mask cracked. I mean, people are running around there. Those are rocks on the moon. You know, they even they said that they brought back rocks from the room those are those are not marshmallows there's not cheese on the moon when you fall on those rocks your face mask will split open in in a second uh, if you're going 20 miles an hour on a, a moon buggy or running around like you were so anyways um of course there's everyone points out the foot the footprint uh, impressions uh there's no water on the moon so how could I, I, you know when you go on the beach and there's and you go on the sand that has no water and you step in your foot the, the the reason you don't your 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 or your shoe the reason there's no imprint of your Nike shoe print on the bottom of your um you know on the sand is because it's dry and dry as sand doesn't it doesn't stick together you know of course it just immediately separates so when you walk on the beach on dry sand you just get a hole where your foot was or where your shoe was you don't get a a beautiful imprint like you had uh, on the moon. Uh, so that's one of the silly things of the moon um, that needs to be explained. There's, of course, uh, these are all pictures from the, this is all stuff from NASA that you get, get these pictures from NASA. Uh, changes in the landscape, certain points imply uh, bl bl backlight, split screen uh, backlighting from Kubrick's 2001 technique. And that is what you'll have is, you'll have like a bunch of rocks, you know, and then if you look, there's like a separation, and then uh, and then all of a sudden it turns all smooth, you know, really close to the people. And you're like, what happened there? And supposedly it's a split screen uh, uh, a technique that uh, Kubrick used, and that's the actual, the beginning of the screen. So type in split screen moon landing, and you'll see people analyzing NASA photographs, you know, uh, of that. All right. Uh, they have one famous program where it's the same background, same mission, or something, or two different missions, or something, and it's like the mountain is the mountain is the um, the same mountain, but one picture has the um, the lander with the mountain, and then one picture has the lander without the mountain, and it's like how could that be? That's impossible. So I'm just mentioning some NASA pictures that you need to go look. All right. Let's get some more some more logical ones. Uh, as soon as the astronauts come back the, from Apollo 11, they immediately retire from NASA? 
They immediately just leave NASA. Why? Don't they have an obligation to be available for consulting future missions? I mean, if I'm about to go to the to the moon in Apollo 12 or Apollo 13 or Apollo 15, I want to talk to people who uh, who have been there. You know what I mean? Uh, and um, I want to know everything that that they did and whatever. You know, if if other people go somewhere, if I go to Disneyland. I would rather talk to somebody who's been to Disneyland than, than, than just go there blindly if I can. And so anyways, uh, you know, first of all, our taxes paid for their opportunity to experience going to the moon. They, they call themselves heroes, and that's fine. They're heroes if they went to the moon. But don't forget, we paid We paid for those those trips that they have. Uh, don't they have a sense of gratitude uh, towards the taxpayer? Um, uh Uh, to, uh, uh, yeah, don't they have a sense of gratitude? Uh, and, 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 and not only that, but don't they have a sense of brotherly love for their fellow astronauts to help them out? You know, this. And then the, the other thing is, more important, doesn't NASA need their expertise? Or are they and their knowledge disposable because they have no experience going to the moon? Is that why NASA just let them go? I mean, I want to know what did NASA do to try to keep them in NASA? Or did they just say, sure, fine, leave, you know, go do whatever you want to do. Um, uh, we don't care if you leave because you never went to the moon. So, uh, I'm sorry, I flipped the, flip this thing, so hopefully that'll be better. Just notice that. All right. Uh, I, you know, I guess my talking, I, I'm, you, don't have, you don't have to, yeah, I'd be surprised if you can read this. This is just notes for me to read while I do this. Um, it's mainly my voice, so this is more of a podcast. Um, uh, buzz gets buzzed. Uh, Aldrin became an absolute chronic alcoholic, had to be institutionalized. There's a movie about him that was made, you know, a good, and it was it was made about him just going crazy, you know, that he was he went insane and how he couldn't. Uh, and this was a movie a long time ago, made in the eighties. It might have been a television movie, even, you know what I mean? But it was all about him going insane instead of, you know, being about the moon landing, which was kind of strange. And I'll I'll talk about something the connection between that and and um, whatever. But why are you going insane and, and becoming an alcoholic and? having so many problems when you went to the moon, you know? Uh, maybe it's because you're living a lie and you can't handle it. I, I would start drinking like crazy also if I was living a lie, especially if I thought NASA was going to kill me if I even, uh, if I broke down and, uh, and mentioned uh, that it was a lie. That, that's a lot of stress to live year after year not knowing if somebody's going to snuff you out uh, because you know something that people don't, you know, those people don't want you to know. Uh, and the same thing, Armstrong didn't, I don't think, went insane, but he refused interviews about walking on the moon, and he did do 160 minutes, I guess NASA forced him to, forced him to a 60 minutes interview, uh, but on the interview, he never admits walking on the moon, and, uh, and, and also he says strange things like, I'm not a hero, I'm not a this, are you kidding me? You were the first person to walk on the moon. If, if children, what are you saying this to children, you know? If children can't hold you as a hero for walking on the moon, I, I don't know who they can hold a hero uh, this. So, but he, he says things like cryptically that he doesn't deserve it and this and this and it, it's just strange and, and, and there's absolutely no, no questions about, um, the, the, the him walking on the moon or whatever. So, um, so I think this was a, you know, he obviously, he, he, he obviously told NASA, he, he probably had a lot of power when NASA went into it, because I think he was a stand-up guy. I think all these people were stand-up guys, I, and I would have done the same thing they did, you know, anybody would have, you know, if people threatened to kill you, <laughs> you, you do what they say, you know, unless you somehow can, uh, uh, bypass their, uh, intentions. Um, so, uh, uh, but, but on the other hand, you've got to realize that, that as much power as they have on you, you have the same power on them. And so I think that, that Neil Armstrong, uh, uh, said it straight with, uh, NASA that they could, they could say that he walked on the moon or whatever, but he would never say it himself. And here's another example. Um, 
uh, uh, I'm going to go over this real quickly. There's a book called Moonshot uh, right here, Moonshot. And uh, I, I picked it up. I pick up all the moon stuff. I want to. I want to be convinced that we did go to the moon. I, you, people don't want to. It's not like we hate the moon or hate astronauts or something. It's just stuff doesn't make sense. All this this list is a, about stuff that doesn't make sense. If only one thing made sense instead of just believe us, you know, we went to the moon. Show me the evidence, you know. Get do something that no no Hollywood uh, director is going to say. Oh yeah, there's no way I could have. Uh, there's no way I could have done that shot. Uh, of course you could. No director is going to say that. He'd be, he'd be pathetic. Anyways, in this book uh, uh, called Moonshot, go look it up yourself. And guess what? It's not written by a wacko. It's written by Deke Skelton, one of the guys who run the, ran the, the, the thing. It is run by NASA. You know, it was written by NASA people. Um, I noticed, uh, you know, as soon as I cracked it open, I noticed, oh, forward by Neil uh, Neil Armstrong, I'm like, oh, cool, you know, let me read what he says. And by the way, Moonshot is not about making chicken or grilling steaks or whatever. Moonshot is about landing on the moon, and, and specifically the Apollo 11 uh, landing on the moons. So don't think like, well, Neil Armstrong never mentioned that he walked on the moon because the moonshot is about the whiskey shots or something. I don't know, it's some sort of... Uh, <laughs> moonshine book no this book is moonshot is about um landing on the moon by nasa individuals writing it not wacko people anyways if you read the forward of that of that book and i'm gonna let you read it i could show it to you and whatever but this lecture is getting way too long as it is um but you go search it up and tell me no he did mention he walked on the moon no, he never mentioned, he's, and he writes about three or four pages of stuff, uh, hundreds of words, you know, and never once mentions that he landed on the moon. In fact, he says something really kind of cryptic about one of the officials that had died uh, too soon. So, the, taken too soon, I think he said, uh, which he died, you know, and it was almost like, uh, hmm, I wonder... I wonder if he, by too soon, he meant something. Uh, the other thing you need to watch, of course, which is very famous, uh, is uh, the 1994 White House speech uh, that Neil Armstrong talks in front of the kids and the press, where he says, uh, remove truths of something veil or whatever. And people are like, what is he talking about? That, uh, that will we'll go to the moon when, you know, after you remove truths veil. It's like... What, what truth uh, had a veil in front of it as a lie? You know, there's no thing. I'm surprised even he was able to squeeze that in. Okay. Um, uh, I was sitting in um, uh, just recently and uh, watching the movie First Man, and uh, there's been no movie Hollywood movie made about Armstrong or Aldrin or Collins, except for the Aldrin cra crazy movie about him going crazy but not going onto the moon, um, until 2019. And Neil, Neil Armstrong died in 2012. Um, the guy who directed uh, First Man about the movie, about uh, Neil Armstrong, he also directed La La Land, uh, which had Ryan Gosling. He's, I read an article of, of him talking about uh, First Man and Ryan Gosling, and he said, oh, we had a... We had uh, Ryan Gosling uh, ideas, Neil Armstrong, um, before we even we, before we even started making uh, uh, La La Land, or even or even had him uh, thought of him for La La Land or whatever before. And I'm like, wait a second, like La La Land came out like something like 2016 or something. And if you go before that, you know, it probably took a couple of years for pre-production, post-production, production, all that filming it. It's a pretty, pretty entailed uh, musical. Um, you, you're going like, came out 2016, that means that, you know, all the filming and all the production of it probably were took 2014, you know, and, and we're talking about even before that, you might even be talking about 2013 when they were talking about making the movie about Neil Armstrong. And I'm like, what made people say, hey, he's dead, let's make a movie about Neil Armstrong, you know? And I know a lot of people go, well, when people die, let's make a, a movie about him. <laughs> this is the greatest man on earth that did the greatest feat on earth and went to the moon and whatever, and you wait 50 years to make a movie about him? No. 
The reason you had to wait 50 years to make a movie about him is because I'm sure that if you even tried to make a movie about him before, he would have been um, a very pissed, or you had some sort of contract uh, with him um, that you couldn't do it. So once he was dead and able to roll over in his grave, had a movie about him walking on the moon, uh, then you could do that. All right, we're almost done here. The last page here. All righty. Um, all right. Um, uh, the, here's another book. Michael Collins put out a book in 1988. I'm sorry, I don't know the thing, but I'm sure if you type in Michael Collins 1988 book, I'm sure it'll come up. Um, anyways, so again, I love moon stuff. Uh, there's no better, the NASA has not made more money, <laughs> NASA makes millions of dollars off, uh, us supposed wackos, you know, because we want to go to Michael Collins' book. We want to go to Neil Armstrong's book. We want to go to NASA pictures. We want, we go to the source. We don't listen to wackos. If we listen to wackos like me or whatever, we just listen to them for the idea, but we immediately go out and confirm like a good police detective we don't just accept things you know we're, we 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 go out and confirm it and go oh yeah nasa did do this michael collins book did do this so anyways if you can get a copy of the book or get a copy i don't know maybe on google books you could go through the pages hopefully there's this is 1988 1988 is what 69 uh, 69, it's almost 20 years after the moon landing. And by the way, it's not a cooking book, Michael Collins' cooking book, Michael Collins' favorite, you know, albums, you know, f Michael Collins. It's a, it's a book about him landing on the moon. 20 years after he landed on the moon, there is not one photograph in the entire book. It's all drawings. And I was like, well, the publishers thought that little of Michael Collins? That they didn't even, I mean, at least a shot of him, like, <laughs> it's incredible that the, the publishers didn't allow one photograph. I guess you guys will have to come back and say, well, do you know how expensive it is to put photographs? Oh, I guess no photographs were put in books before 1988. <laughs> it's like, it doesn't work, you know. <laughs> Again, that's why I call this a logical thing. It's like, come on, listen to you guys saying, saying things like, yeah, book made by one of the guys that went on the Apollo 11 mission 20 years after about him going to the moon doesn't have one photograph in it. Come on. It's like, give me a break. Anyways. All right. Um, real quickly, uh, there's a really thing, thing about, the, the, I have a problem with stars. I really have a problem with when they just show the blackness of space and in the, in the blackness of the, of the moon, but no stars, you know. So people can be like, well, the, the earth is bright. That's why you can't see the, the stars, you know. But fine, turn the camera then away from the earth. There's no atmosphere. You should be able to see billions of stars. Leave the exposure. You're inside the, you're inside the space station. You're inside a, a, a thing, a capsule. Can you get one of the windows to be pointing away from the earth and leave the exposure on for a long time, you know? And get a shot of the stars? Of course you can't, because, you know, if you take a shot of the stars, uh, we would know that, the, 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 you know, you can't, first of all, because you're not there, you know what I mean? And if you say, oh, this is a shot of the stars, astronomers will immediately say, no, that, that's not that's not the star thing, you made that up, you know what I mean? That's not, uh, the, that's not the star map that you would see if you were in a capsule going to the moon or orbiting the Earth. So... But even on top of that, you guys still might be saying, well, Vince, no, you can't see stars out in space, which is, well, the Apollo 8, go listen to the, again, go to the astronauts, they'll tell you, they'll, they tell you that, they have to tell you they're lying, just like, you know, uh, when you, when a police questions somebody, if he questions them really well, he can get them in a lie, it's the same, it's a police, it's a police investigation, People put the word conspiracy to mean wacko, you know what I mean, when conspiracy is actually a legal term, you know. But no, it's a police investigation. <laughs> but it's a police investigation where the, the astronauts are just saying what they want. So the Apollo 8 astronauts, go look at the, uh, there was a, the, recently a, a show on um, on uh, the Apollo 8 astronauts that just came out. Again, this is July 2019, and... Um, uh, it's on the Apollo 8. It's it's by P. 
POV on the public station uh, if you want. But I'm sure you can find them, you know. You go look at the, and these are Apollo 8 astronauts that are still alive, like, today now, you know. And they said that, that when they went to the dark side of the moon, uh, they looked at the stars and they said there's more stars than you can imagine. It was amazing. Oh, my God. The stars were so beautiful. So many stars. So wh why don't you take a picture of them? You know, you know, take the, the picture of the, the Earth rise, but you won't take, you know, put a long exposure or whatever you have to do to see. You know, give me a fuzzy picture of the stars, whatever you have to do. But this is what is interesting. As you hear that and you go, oh, okay. No, the, the, the astronauts did see stars, you know, but you can't get them on film. But this is the problem. If you go look at that interview that I told you at the very beginning, I told you uh, very close to the beginning, I said there's an interview with uh, uh, right after Neil uh, Buzz and Collins uh, came back, about a month after they came back from Apollo 11 uh, mission. Uh, if you go look at that, um, one of the one of the 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 newsmen asks uh, uh, something like, "What are, what did the stars look like? You know, could you see the stars or something?" And nobody is like, I don't think anybody is answering him. And then, uh, and then somebody answers him, but then Collins uh, blurts out, uh, "He goes, I don't think I, I remember seeing stars." And look at Neil. They, they, I'm sure shocked that they still that they didn't cut it out. Neil stares at Collins like. He's about to cut his throat. I mean, he's so pissed that that Collins said that he couldn't remember. I, I'm not even sure what the, the problem is there with him saying that. So again, you have Apollo 8, which was before Apollo 11 astronauts, saying there's billions and billions of bright stars. And then you have Apollo 11 after saying, oh, no, there's no stars. There was no stars in the sky. You couldn't see any stars. You know, what, I, 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 again, logic, you know, come on. <laughs> Just like, all right, the last point, which again, it's so funny that, you know, if you have, if, if you're a policeman and you have a convict and he's but just talking his head off, you know, you just need to sit there. And you love, the more he talks, the more you can convict him if he's guilty, you know what I mean? Because he's going to hang himself with his own tongue, as they said in the Ten Commandments, you know, a movie. Uh, you, you could, you're could, you going to hang yourself with your own tongue. Um, so wh I, I watched all the, the again, the, the, the NASA is making a mint off of me and a lot of these people because we, we watch all this stuff because, you know, we want you to say, oh, we want to say, oh, that. You couldn't reproduce that. You're right. You did go to the moon. No Hollywood director, every Hollywood director uh, is going to say, there's no way I could have done that shot. That would have been impossible, you know, with even 1968 technology. Anyways, in one of the shows, and I never knew this, and I mean, I just learned this two days ago, and it's whatever, July 20th, 19, uh, 2019. Um, uh, they showed how many hours uh, on the Apollo 11 mission, how many hours each astronaut had spent in space before Apollo 11. Well, let's go through them and see what you think. Buzz Aldrin, how many hours had he had done before Apollo 11? 94 hours in space. Okay. How about Collins, Michael Collins? How many hours had he had done in space? 72 hours he had spent in space. Okay. And finally, Neil Armstrong. I, I, I'm surprised NASA allowed this information out. I, I don't know how they, you know, how they, uh, they allowed this information out. Uh, but I guess it's out there, so there's nothing they can control. So I, I guess they figured it. But to me, it seemed like the stupidest thing I'd ever seen in my life. You know, or just like, Wow, and people believe this. So Neil, uh, uh, Buzz Aldrin, ninety-four hours before Apollo Eleven out in space. Collins, seventy-two hours out in uh, uh, experience out in space. Neil Armstrong, thirteen hours out in space. I'm sorry if I have three individuals about the same age and one has done 94 surgeries on a spleen, one has done 72 surgeries on a spleen, and one has done 13 surgeries on a spleen. 
I, I, I'm going to choose at least, at the very least, the 72 guy. At the, at the, at the, I would think I would choose the guy, the 94 hours, uh, uh, the 94 hours uh, experience, uh, Buzz Aldrin as the uh, commander. I think that Neil Armstrong was chosen as the commander because he was the most stable he, he was he was the unbreakable guy. We see Collins breaking down, as I said in the in the. He was and he's not as smart, you know. Uh, uh, Buzz Aldrin was actually the smartest school wise. He had like a PhD in in aerodynamics or something. He he was a very intelligent guy school wise. But the problem was is that he, I don't think that Buzz Aldrin could handle a pressure like Neil Armstrong. So why do you put somebody who's only had 13 hours over 94 or 72 hours in command of a, a ship? I mean, it's insane. You know, uh, uh, <laughs> if I'm on a Navy ship and you tell me the captain of the Navy ship has 13 missions under his belt, but the second in command has 94 missions and and and, 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 the, and the the... the, the the, the navigator has 72 missions, you know, all of equal value. I, I, I'm not going to, I'm not even going to believe it. I swear, I, I, I couldn't believe it. it was so amazingly stupid uh, to think that, that, that this made sense. But the problem is, is the, 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 the point is, is that Neil Armstrong was the most, they probably tested them out and found out which was most could handle psychological. And they went through psychological tests, very bizarre psychological tests, um, uh, when they went through their first training and to be chosen, even to be chosen to be uh, the Apollo astronauts, they had to go through rigorous psychological tests. Uh, and I think that that wasn't just rigorous psychological tests for um, uh, to handle, you know, the, 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 the craziness of uh, space travel, you know, the insanity of going to another planet or whatever. I got a feeling it was the, ins uh, the NASA had already had the idea and they knew very a long time before that they, that it was going to be almost impossible to go to the moon, and they wanted to know who they could um, control and who they couldn't control, and that's why you have the least experienced uh, uh, pilot or commander uh, commanding um, a uh, uh, the Apollo 11 uh, mission. All right, I think this is one of my longest things—47 minutes. Well, if you stuck it out to the end, congratulations. <laughs> All right, well. I hope you enjoyed this lecture. Look forward to any comments at the bottom. And thank you very much for watching.